Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I think the Nobel Peace Prize gives us a very important reminder in the middle of our daily economic crisis management about the fantastic success story of the European Union. I think that's good to remember because uh, in this time of crisis management that affects us all. And we have done a lot. First of all, huge reform efforts have been undertaken in the, in the countries most affected with very difficult consequences uh, for the population. Secondly, on the European level, we have agreed the fiscal compact and reinforced the stability and growth pact. Uh, we have a complete new economic governance through the EU 2020 in the European semester, and we have agreed the growth compact in June. Having said that, still a lot remains to be done, in particular when it comes to European competitiveness. We are every day losing ground to faster growing economies in other parts of the world. 90% of all growth in the world will come from countries outside of Europe looking until 2015. Nationally, we must continue to undertake structural reforms to enhance our competitiveness. Reforms that make our labor markets more efficient, including enabling more women to participate. Reforms of our welfare systems that make work pay and that take into account the dramatic demographic changes that we are, in fact, already facing. In the Swedish budget, just tabled for 2013, we give priority to investments in infrastructure, research and innovation, enterprise and housing. To ensure that Sweden has an effective and sustainable transport system, we have increased its funding uh, considerably. We are making major investments in research and innovation spending, including targeted investments in areas such as life sciences and sustainable urban planning. We also want to strengthen Sweden's business climate and support entrepreneurs. Corporate tax will be lowered down to 22% in order to make it more attractive to invest in Sweden. We also intend to induce a tax credit for investors so as to stimulate access to capital in new and small but expanding enterprises. We are also trying to find new ways to tackle youth employment, which has been a problem in Sweden for a long time. We are working on what we call a job pact between the trade unions, employers, and the government, who together would make financial contributions to facilitate younger persons' entry into the labor market. We are also learning from other countries successful apprenticeship programs and try to introduce this instrument on a larger scale also in Sweden. On the EU level, we believe that we should now focus our efforts on implementing the new economic and fiscal frameworks that we have agreed. Complete the internal market. A real follow-up is needed on how decisions are implemented. Fulfillment of internal market could lead to an increase of 10% of GDP, according to the Commission. Conclude more free trade agreements with third countries. For example, there is a huge potential in the EU-Japan FTA. Together, Japan and EU uh, consists of 33% of the world market. And change the EU's next multiannual financial framework so that it gives priority to growth instead of reflecting old structures. When it comes to the report presented by the presidents of the European Council, Commission, Eurogroup, and the ECB, we believe that more time is needed to thoroughly and transparently be able to go through these proposals. Some of these proposals are far-reaching, as they include transfers of competence to the EU level, including treaty changes. The full involvement of national parliaments is very important. As for the discussion on the banking union, we fully support a better supervision of banks. Work on this has already been ongoing for some time. As regards the Commission uh, recent proposal on a single supervisory mechanism, we have a number of questions, and we believe that a lot of work is still needed before this new structure can be put into place. Firstly, 
The maybe most important question concerns who will pick up the bill when the supervisory mechanism finds a bank that needs recapitalization. Secondly, we also want to be sure that member states are still able to put higher capital requirements on their banks than the minimum levels included in Basel III. And thirdly, we also want to ensure fair and balanced influence between participating and non-participating states. If you build a new system, we must be sure that the new system is better than the old system. In the last couple of years, we have accomplished a lot to overcome the economic crisis. Much needs still to be done. Given the history of the European Union, I am sure we will be successful also this time. Thank you very much for your attention.